Hello, everyone. My name is Christina Liu. I am, and I'm here joined by Coach Roth Adams. Hey, everyone. And, uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, today, we're gonna. I'm gonna be just asking Coach Roth Adams some questions. Um, so, my name is Christina. Again, um, I'm a coach, executive coach, life coach, and uh, I've been working with Roth on his uh, book and a concept called Suda Monk. And I thought it would be really relevant in today's world where leaders and individuals are having to manage this, uh, what we call the VUCA world. So I first heard about this actually in my previous company. And I can ask um, you know, Coach Raf to talk a little bit about what VUCA means and how this concept of Suda Monk can help leaders and individuals to manage all of us in this VUCA world, especially you know, today with the coronavirus, there's a lot of uncertainties going on in this world. So yeah, Raf, um, tell us about a little bit more about Suda Monk and uh, uh, the VUCA world and how the Suda Monk concept can help us to manage this. Sure. Yes, because this morning I was doing a radio, radio interview in Spanish and the word VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And it's actually a term that started in the war around 1970s when there was a war. They used to call the war the VUCA world because it's very volatile and uncertain. Mm -hmm. And then later on, Paul Pullman, the CEO of Unilever, used it into business. Because these days, if we look at businesses, there is more and more a VUCA world. Volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And as you say, just right now with the coronavirus in China, it has an effect on businesses around the world and on mm -hmm. individuals around the world. So the question is really, how do we deal and how do we cope and how do we manage ourselves as leaders, but also as individuals in, in a vocal world? Because things can change very quickly, depending mm -hmm. on what happens in social media or depending on what happens, for example, in, in cases like China. So with Sudet Monk, um, it's basically a philosophy. The suit is your external self, how you represent yourself. Mm -hmm. And the monk is your internal self, who you really are on the inside. Mm -hmm. And most people have a gap between how they represent themselves and who they really are. Mm -hmm. And that gap creates the, the suffering and the unhappiness and the uncertainties and the fears. Mm -hmm. So the question is when you work in a company and you have to deal with changes. So for example, right now I'm working with a, um, a company that distributes products to pharmacies. Mm -hmm. And because of the China virus, there is more demand in the market for certain products. So the company needs to deal with the change, but they cannot basically meet up with demand. So the question is, how do you deal internally as an individual with all these changes that are coming up um, mm -hmm. for you in the company as an individual? Right. Yeah, yeah. So how did you help them to manage this change with the concept of Suda Monk, which is a fantastic concept? Right. So the first thing is to have awareness that change exists and that we cannot control the change. Mm -hmm. Because typically what happens is if you're in the meeting, let's say, and you have a communication with someone, um, people interrupt each other. They don't take time to think or they don't take time to reflect. Mm -hmm. And it's really important sometimes to take a step back. So I always recommend people before something unexpected happens, wait two to three seconds before you respond. Mm. Because when you respond immediately to an event, it, it could be a judgment or a criticism or its immediate impact from the mind. But right. when you wait two to three seconds, you go beyond the mind and you actually go inside your heart and you can respond as what I call an observer. Mm -hmm. You're not attached to the suit, but you are your authentic self. And then you can respond with more peace and more calm. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, we cannot control the external environment, but we can change the way we manage and control ourselves. Yeah, so always yeah. take a step back and wait two to three seconds is like really key in managing the VUCA world. Absolutely. I, I love that. And, you know, I'm also a psychologist. And so, you know, in the psychology terms, we say, you know, when you first have that immediate reaction, it's kind of your lizard brain or the, you know, right. the, the part of your, the old brain that basically is uh, used for survival. It, it's, yes. it's there for giving you the fight, flight, or freeze response. Because, you right. know, back in the days, we're used to having to deal with a lot of uncertainties in the world and, you know, things running at us. And we have to respond very quickly. But in today's world, you know, it's not a tiger or lion running at you. So you can take that time. Like you said, at least the two to three seconds, let your heart sink in, let your prefrontal cortex sink in and not have to 
react in a um, suboptimal manner. Exactly. And especially, for example, right now um, with the China case, let's say the travel agencies, they have a lot of challenges right now because maybe some people had a plan to travel to China to visit the, the Beijing Wall or the, the Terracotta Army. Mm -hmm. And now all the flights are canceled. Um, right. So it has a big impact on an individual level for people who plan the travel. But at the same time, for example, at travel agencies as well, maybe they don't have um, opportunities to send people to China. So it's like, how do you cope with that change? At the end of the day, we, we can't control it, mm. but we can change the way we manage ourselves. Yeah. And really taking that time to reflect is really important to, to not create that gap between our external and, and internal self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you talk about, you use this concept of student monk with leaders. And I'm hearing what you're saying, you know, with this taking time to reflect I'm also hearing just underlying there is a bit of kind of almost surrender, like accepting. But what about leaders who need to achieve results? And they need to have deliverables and outcomes. Like how, how can the pseudomon concept help there? Because if I'm hearing, you know, you just accept everything, like what if I still have these numbers to meet? Like what happened right. there? Right. <laughs> Well, it's all about balance. It's about how do you achieve the numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you only operate from suit, from, from the mind, mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot of stress to, to meet the numbers because you're going to be, have a lot of pressure in the mind. You're going to have a lot of thinking like you need to meet the targets. Okay. So this is part of the external world. So the way mm -hmm. is how do you approach it? And this is part of your monk, it's part of your internal self. Mm -hmm. So you really need to every day take time to reflect, be mindful, practice mindfulness every day, just always to come back to your internal self. So you need to find that balance, that pace between who am I on the inside and what are the objectives that I need to achieve and find mm. that balance between the two. Because if you only focus on the external, you will burn out in the long term and yeah. it's, it's not sustainable. Right. And I'm also hearing, you know, that's what a lot of people do and leaders do is just focus on the external, just focus on how can I deliver those numbers and not really taking the time to ask themselves, you know, who am I really deep down? What does my exactly. true self really want? And how can I align what I need exactly. to deliver with who I am? Exactly. And what I'm hearing is that there's so much you know, awareness and mindfulness, would you say, and consciousness that's required to have that balance because it's so easy to just to uh, let the external world drive everything that we do. Yep. Wow. So, so, how, so and, you know, we're kind of coming to the end of our conversation. So what recommendations do you have to give people of how they can take that first step to, to make this alignment between the external and the internal? Very simple. Start your day in the morning before you work with consciousness and mindfulness. Mm. Take your time to reflect. Take your time just to connect with yourself. Just mm. two to three minutes. And then at the end of the day or at midday, schedule a time where you're going to re-reflect with yourself, like reconnect. It's enough. So once you reconnect, you are centered. You can mm. work. You can do everything. During midday, after a few meetings, a few calls with clients, just to reconnect two, three minutes, yeah. then you can work again. In that way, it's much more sustainable. You're going to feel much more relaxed. You're going to have an open mind. You're mm -hmm. going to maybe think and reflect on, hey, maybe I can do these things differently. Maybe I can delegate more things to other people and so on. So it's just about reflection and having conscious. Right. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And what I'm hearing is that it doesn't actually take that long, but really it requires some conscious effort to, yep. to actually do it. It only may take a few minutes, but really you have to put in the time and have exactly. that awareness to actually take on that, that step. Exactly. Great. Wonderful. Yep. And so if, um, if people want to connect with you more, Raph, how can they do that? Uh, you can connect with me on Instagram. Suited Monk official, mm -hmm. or you can go to the website suitedmonk.com, or if you want to buy the book, go to amazon.com and you have the Suited Monk in English and Spanish and Chinese. Wow, wonderful. how about yourself? Yeah, so I have a website, it's christinaliu.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram as Coach K Liu. So I coach clients one on one, individuals, leaders, um, entrepreneurs. 
and um, I find the pseudomonk concept really useful. So I use that a lot with my clients. And the, what you're talking about, you know, um, this getting to know our inner self, that's kind of one of the first things that I do with the clients is to know who you really are. And once you have that foundation, doing that daily practice that you're talking about just becomes um, easier and more sustainable. So uh, Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. thank you so much, Raf, for thank this you. conversation today. It was really enlightening and uh, very timely as well in um, today's world that we're having all having to deal with so much uncertainty. So thank you. Yes. Very good. Thanks a lot, Christina. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next Thanks, week. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.